Hey there, J3 here, and welcome to the second video of the Five Pillars of Wealth online seminar series. In this video, we'll be taking on two more very important concepts essential to building wealth. But before we start, I'd like to first say thank you for your comments. I truly, truly appreciate them. Now, to begin today's training, we will be starting with a story from when I was still a kid. This was at the time when I was about 7 or 8 years old, and we just finished eating dinner. For some reason, we didn't eat dinner at the kitchen table, we just ate at my parents' room. And so when we were done, the plates had to be brought out into the kitchen. Being the youngest, the job was passed on to me. Ako yung utosan when it came to the small and simple tasks. So, I stacked the plates on top of each other, patong-patong sila, and as I was carrying the plates back into the kitchen, one of the plates fell out. Nahulog yung plato sa kitchen tiles and natural na nangyari, nabasag ang plato. The sound of the plate breaking was loud enough to be heard from my parents' room. So, my mom came out, galit na galit. And naturally, pinagalitan ako. And I said what any kid would have said. Hindi ko naman sinasadya. It was not on purpose. My mom then replied, Yun nga eh, hindi mo sinasadyang mabasag yung plato. Pero sinadya mo bang mag-ingat? Yes, you didn't do it on purpose, but did you choose to be extra careful? That night, I learned two very important lessons. First was that you can't win any argument with your mother. Wala ka talagang laban. And second was that everything is a choice. Relating the story to our topic of wealth, I didn't choose the plate to fall off and get broken. In the same way, People don't really choose to be poor. But my breaking the plate was a result of not choosing to be careful. In the same way, poverty is also a result of not choosing to be wealthy. This is what pillar number three is all about. Wealth is a choice. While poverty is a result of not making that choice. I'll repeat this in many ways and in different versions so that it will really sink in. Dahil napaka-importante ng lesson na to. If you don't choose to be wealthy, you'll end up with poverty. Wealth is a result of taking deliberate action, while poverty is a result of waiting for opportunities. Wealth is a result of believing in choice, while poverty is a result of relying in chance. To be wealthy is to know the right steps. To be poor is to find comfort in ignorance. Our default setting is to become poor. So if we don't aspire to become wealthy, we will become poor. We need to actively choose to be wealthy. Ang pagyaman ay dapat sinasadya. Okay, you might be wondering, why does it work this way? Why is our default setting to become poor? Well, there are two reasons. The first is because of inflation. Inflation is the increase of prices of goods and services over time. So, pamahal ng pamahal ang bilihin kahit anong gawin natin. And we cannot do anything to prevent this as this is just how money works. This is common in any city, country, or continent in the world that uses money. Kahit saan ka magpunta, merong inflation. So, as prices go up, the amount of money we need to survive and enjoy life also goes up. With this, it is very realistic to think of the road to wealth as an uphill battle. It's an uphill climb. You need to exert more effort in going up and becoming rich, and you need less effort to go down and become poor. Now, the answer to inflation is to learn how to invest your money. But we'll talk about that some other time. For now, let's go to the second reason why our default setting is to become poor. And this reason is actually more significant because it is a major obstacle to wealth. And the moment you address it, the moment you fix it, a huge burden will be lifted. And the path to wealth becomes so much easier. This reason has a lot to do with pillar number four. And pillar number four is... Wealth is passed on to the next generation. Unfortunately, so is poverty. We are a third world nation, and the majority of our habits are also poverty habits. And this is what we pass on from one generation to the next. And so poverty has become our default setting. For example, back when I started teaching Filipinos on how to invest in the stock market, there was one email that really got my attention. One of my subscribers, named Dees, was asking where to invest his extra 15,000 pesos. He mentioned that he got this amount from an SSS loan. He said that he borrowed the money because his mom told him to do so, so he could borrow a higher amount next time. Basically, hindi nila kailangan ng pera. 
Pero umutang sila dahil pwede. From a financial perspective, that made no sense because he would have to incur interest charges. So when I discussed it with him, he was able to borrow 15,000 pesos, but he ended up having to pay 16,612 pesos. So it was a waste of 1,612 pesos. And I said to him, with all due respect to your mom, she gave you really bad advice. That piece of advice cost him to waste 1,612 pesos. So this is a prime example on how we pass on poverty habits to other people. In the case of these, his mom was giving him bad financial advice. In your case, bad advice could be coming from a friend, a relative, or even your boss. With this, it would be very good to think of these poverty habits as like heavy chains attached to our feet. They hold us back in our pursuit of wealth. And add to that, these chains are also invisible. Hindi mo nakikita, hindi mo mapapansin because we have accepted them as truth. We have accepted them without questioning if it's right or wrong. Now, from experience, we Filipinos have a lot of bad financial habits and beliefs. But what I'd like to do now is remove the heaviest and the biggest obstacle on your feet. Ito ang pinakamalubha na paniniwala natin tungkol sa pera. And once you know this, magbabago ng todo ang tingin mo sa pera at sa pagyaman. This is all about the definition of wealth. And uh, side note lang ah, ngayon ko lang naisip na itong seminar na to ay ang title niya, The Five Pillars of Wealth. Pero hindi pa pala natin na define kung ano ba talaga ang ibig sabihin ng wealth. So I guess dapat pala nung first video ko pa to diniscuss. Pero anyway, moving forward, what does wealth mean? I'm going to give you two definitions. And we are going to do some computations because we need a strict definition. We need our goal to be well-defined and measurable so we know what it is exactly that we are aiming for. If you're worried about the math, don't worry because I'll be giving a lot of simple examples and I made sure that they are easy to understand and easy to follow. So let's begin with the first one. In business, wealth refers to a person's net worth. And ano ang net worth? Ito ang halaga ng lahat ng material na pag-aari ng isang tao, that is his assets, bawas ang kanyang mga utang o ang kanyang mga liabilities. This difference between your assets and liabilities is your net worth. So, for example, si Johnny. Okay, Johnny is a young call center agent and over the years, he was able to save 100,000 pesos in the bank. He also owns a second-hand car that he was able to buy through a loan and the car is worth 300,000 pesos today. But he still has to pay 50,000 pesos in the bank. Yun yung utang niya. Aside from the money in the bank and the car, what's left are his clothes, shoes, old gadgets, and let's just say that it's worth 10,000 pesos. And he also has 5,000 pesos in his wallet. So what is Johnny's net worth? Simple lang ang computation. From the given details, what does Johnny own? So, he has cash in the bank worth 100,000 pesos plus his car worth 300,000 pesos plus his clothes and gadgets which is 10,000 pesos and then the money in his wallet which is 5,000 pesos. Then, we subtract his loans amounting to 50,000 pesos. So, we add all of his assets, yung mga kulay green and we subtract his liabilities, yung kulay pula, 100,000 plus 300,000 plus 10,000 plus 5,000 minus 50,000 equals 365,000. So, if anyone asks, how wealthy is Johnny? Gaano ba siya talaga kayaman? We can answer, Johnny is worth 365,000 pesos. Okay? So, let's continue with our example with Johnny. I'm going to give you five simple events in everyday life and observe how it affects Johnny's net worth. Kunwari na lang itong limang event na ito ang mangyayari lang sa buhay ni Johnny. Okay? So, event number one, Johnny decides to watch a movie. He spends 500 pesos for the tickets, drinks, and popcorn. How will this affect Johnny's net worth? Well, the only thing that changed is that instead of having 5,000 pesos in his wallet, magiging 4,500 pesos na lang. So, we change that in the net worth calculations. Okay? So, yung pera niya sa wallet, from 5,000, naging 4,500 na lang. 
And if we sum up all of these numbers together, the new net worth would be from 365,000 would be 364,500 pesos. So yung net effect is bumaba yung net worth niya by 500 pesos. Okay? Now next event, Johnny receives his salary. Johnny received his salary of 25,000 pesos. So kunwari, sakto na yan after taxes, after lahat na ng deductions. And the full amount was deposited in his bank account. So what will change? His bank account from 100,000 pesos will turn into 125,000 pesos. We reflect that in the net worth calculations and we sum up all of the numbers again. So his net worth from 364,500 pesos will become 389,500 pesos. The net effect is kumita siya ng 25,000 pesos. So having a job and getting a salary well, it's definitely making Johnny wealthier. Now we go to event number three. Johnny withdraws 20,000 pesos from the bank. 15,000 pesos goes to rent and groceries and paying the bills. And then 5,000 pesos goes to paying off the car loan. So what happens here? First, his bank account from 125,000 becomes 105,000 pesos na lang dahil nga nag-withdraw siya ng 20,000 pesos. And then, his car loan from 50,000 naging 45,000 na lang dahil nagbayad nga siya ng 5K doon sa car loan. So, how does this affect Johnny's net worth? His bank account, we reduce it to 105,000. His car loan, we also reduce it to 45,000 pesos na lang. If we add these all together, his new net worth from 389,500 pesos becomes 374,500 pesos. Yung net effect is that he lost 15,000 pesos. Okay, now take note here. Yung talagang pera na nawala niya is 20,000 pesos. Pero bakit yung effect sa net worth, 15,000 pesos lang? Kasi yung 5,000 pesos, pinangbayad niya ng utang. So, take note. Ang pagbabayad ng utang, actually helps your net worth. It makes you more wealthy. Kaya nga, the first step to becoming wealthy is becoming debt-free. Okay? Anyway, moving forward, let's go to event 4. Johnny decides to check the price of his car. Hindi niya na ginagamit, so he was already thinking of selling it. Ang alam niya, 300,000 pesos yung halaga ng kotse. But upon checking, people were only willing to buy it for 200,000 pesos. So, yung market value ng kotse ay bumaba na pala. Luma na kasi, mataas na yung mileage, at marami na ring sira. So, dahil bumagsak na yung market value ng kotse, his car from 300,000 pesos is just really worth 200,000 pesos. So, we reflect that change into the net worth, and we sum up all of the new numbers. Ano mangyayari? His net worth from 374,500 pesos will become... 274,500 pesos. So he just lost 100,000 pesos. Okay? So take note here. Dahil bumaba na yung value ng kotse, bumaba na rin yung wealth ni Johnny. So, ang kotse ba ay isang investment? Not really. Because the moment the market value drops, and the moment sakyan mo ang kotse, bagsak na kagad ang market value nun, your net worth also decreases. Okay? Now let's go to event number Five. Johnny's bank pays out an interest of 1% on his bank account. Kunwari na lang, wala ulit withholding taxes ito. So the money in the bank, which is 105,000, gains a 1% interest. This is equivalent to 1,050 pesos. Yung bank account niya, dati, 105,000. Ngayon, 106,050 pesos na. And we reflect that change to the net worth. And we compute again the effect on the net worth. Okay, so from 274,500 pesos, it becomes 275,550 pesos. So the change is he gained 1,050 pesos to his net worth. Now, I hope that with these examples, you learned how day-to-day -day activities affect your net worth. Going to the movies makes you poor. Getting a job and earning a salary makes you rich. Paying rent and doing groceries makes you poor. But syempre, kailangan gastosan ito. Buying a car makes you poorer dahil mabilis bumagsak ang market value. Now, 
saving in a bank and earning interest, that makes you wealthy. And if you can invest in bonds, real estate, stocks, para hindi lang 1% yung kinikita ng pera mo, that will make you even more wealthy. Everything we do with our money can make us wealthier or poorer. It can either increase or decrease our net worth. Using the net worth, malinaw na malinaw kung ano ba talaga ang choice na magpapayaman sa'yo at kung ano ang magpapahirap. Now, net worth is an absolute measure of wealth. You can really tell how wealthy a person is by this number. That's why it's a widely used measure of wealth. But a missing factor to the net worth is that it doesn't show the quality or the stability of a person's wealth. For example, winning the lotto. Uh, let's say a 10 million jackpot. A 10 million jackpot will immediately boost net worth by 10 million pesos. But after 5 years, the majority of winners go back to where they started. Their net worth goes down drastically. And so this is an example of someone's wealth who is highly unstable. That's why we go to the second measure of wealth. This definition is widely used in personal finance, but I first encountered this definition through Robert Kiyosaki. Si Robert Kiyosaki ay isa sa mga kauna-unahang nagtuturo sa masa kung paano ba yumaman. So when he started, he created a lot of controversy because he was calling out a lot of bad practices of the financial institutions. So think of him as a whistleblower, kumbaga. He exposed a lot of bad financial advice. Throughout the years, his teaching has gained popularity and so it has become widely accepted. So today, his definition of wealthy is also used by many people. Now, there is no specific name for this measure. So in this video, we will just refer to it as wealth stability. And wealth stability is measured by answering the following question. If you suddenly stopped working right now, how long will your money last before you need to work again while maintaining your current lifestyle? Kung bigla kang tubigil magtrabaho, hanggang kailan ka tatagal bago mo kailangan magtrabaho ulit nang hindi binabago ang iyong nakasanayang pamumuhay? Wealth stability is not measured in pesos or dollars. It is measured in terms of time. So it's measured in days, months, or years. The formula for wealth stability is your total cash, plus cash equivalents divided by your monthly expenses minus your passive income. I just introduced several terms here, but don't worry, we will define each one. So first, cash. Cash is simple, basically cash, pera, bills, coins, and barya. Okay, next, cash equivalents. Cash equivalents are instruments quickly convertible into cash. So, these are your bank deposits, mutual funds, stock market investments, and treasury bills. Basta mabilis mong mapalitan into cash, those are cash equivalents. So, as long as mabilis mong ma-withdraw yung pera, those are cash equivalents. Hindi cash equivalents ang kotse o bahay dahil maghahanap ka pa ng buyer noon, mahaba pa yung proseso ng pagbenta, and so on. Okay? Now, next term. Monthly expenses. Again, this is simple. Kasama dito yung basic expenses like food, utilities, mortgage payments, etc. It also includes the not-so-basic expenses like entertainment, travel, pati yung binibigay mo sa charity. Those are monthly expenses. Ang hindi kasama dito ay savings and investments. Next, we have passive income. Passive income is money you can earn without having to be there. Kahit wala ka, kahit tulog ka, kahit nagbabakasyon ka, if money still flows to you, that is passive income. Okay? So your salary is not passive income dahil kung di ka magtrabaho, hindi ka rin si sweldohan. However, interest from bonds and dividends from the stock market is also passive income dahil basta shareholder ka o bondholder ka, kumikita ka ng pera. Selling houses and earning a commission is not passive income dahil kapag wala kang benta, wala ka rin kita. However, renting out houses and collecting rent is passive income dahil kahit nasan ka man, basta may tenant ka at nandun siya sa property mo, pwede mo siyang singilin ng rent. Okay? So now that we have defined the terms, let us go into three examples for computing wealth stability. This time, let's use the example of Boyet. Okay, si Boyet ay may pera sa banko amounting to 150,000 pesos. 
at buwan-buwan siya ay gumagastos ng mga 20,000 pesos. Wala na siyang ibang cash at wala na rin siyang ibang pinagkakakitaan. This is all the information we need. Now, kung biglang tumigil magtrabaho si Boyet, ilang buwan siya tatagal bago maubos ang lahat ng pera niya. The computations are simple. So, 150,000, that is his cash and cash equivalents. Then, his monthly expenses is 20,000 pesos. Okay? Then he has no passive income, which brings us to 150,000 pesos divided by 20,000 pesos equals 7.5. So, Boyet's wealth will last him for 7.5 months. Yun ang kanyang wealth stability. Okay? Simple lang, di ba? Next example, let's go to Kathy. Kathy is already an executive of a large corporation. She earns 150,000 pesos every single month. Big time na siya. But Kathy doesn't know how to save money. Lahat ng pera niya, mabilis niyang nagagastos. Aircon lagi sa bahay, marami siyang kotse dahil hilig niya to. Every month, shopping ng new clothes dahil hindi pwedeng twice suotin ng outfit kasi tsaka yun. At lahat ng bagong restaurant, kakainan niya lahat yun. In other words, she has a very high income, but she spends all of it. Next, let's go to how much Kathy has been able to save. Well, he has half a million in the bank and another 250,000 pesos under the mattress. Matagal niya na itong hindi nadadagdagan and wala rin siyang passive income. So, how wealthy is Kathy? If all of a sudden, Kathy stops working, how long will she last? So, her monthly expenses is 150,000 pesos. Then, you have 500,000 pesos in the bank plus the 250,000 pesos under the mattress. And for passive income, you have zero. So, if you add 250,000 plus 500,000, you have 750,000 divided by 150,000, which are her monthly expenses. Kathy will last for five months. So, Kathy's wealth will last her only 5 months. Take note, mas stable pa si Boyet kesa kay Kathy. Kahit na ba mas malaki ang kinikita ni Kathy buwan-buwan, Boyet can last up to 7.5 months. Pero si Kathy, 5 months lang. So I hope you're seeing the difference here when it comes to wealth stability. Now let's go to our third example, Andrea. Andrea earns 25,000 pesos a month but only spends 15,000 pesos. Yung excess na 10,000 pesos, she divides for savings and for business. So right now, she has 100,000 pesos in the bank and she has a small shomai stand earns her about 5,000 pesos per month. Yung 5,000 na yan, after na yan ang pasweldo at saka yung mga pagbili ng gamit, bayad ng renta, and so on. With this, how wealthy is Andrea? Here's the computation. So, Her monthly expenses, 15,000 pesos. Then, her cash and cash equivalents, 100,000 pesos. And then, passive income is 5,000 pesos. Take note, it's monthly expenses minus the passive income. Sum these up, it's 100,000 pesos divided by 10,000 pesos. And so, Andrea can last for 10 long months. Andrea's wealth will last for 10 months. In this example, we see the benefit of having passive income. Kasi kahit tumigil ka magtrabaho, may pera pa rin na pumapasok sa'yo. Okay? So your wealth can last longer. With these three examples, again, it is very clear what increases your stability and what doesn't. Anything that increases your savings makes you more stable. Anything that increases your expenses makes you less stable. And anything that makes you earn passive income, again, makes you more stable. Now, just in case you're wondering, what happens if your passive income already exceeds your monthly expenses? Well, that means kahit hindi ka na magtrabaho, pwede kang mabuhay with your current lifestyle. Okay? You don't need to work actively anymore. And that is called financial freedom. If you can generate enough passive income to sustain your lifestyle, then you are free from money. You are infinitely stable. That is the highest form of stability when it comes to wealth. Okay? So before we move forward, let's review everything so far. Medyo marami na ring numbers, so layo muna tayo sa computations. Wealth can be defined in two ways. First is net worth and then wealth stability. And increasing these two numbers will make you wealthy. 
ang pagtitipid, pagtatrabaho, pagsimula ng business, learning about money, investing. Yun ang mga nagpapataas ng dalawang numbers na yon. And this is what you call being wealthy. And gusto ko lang i-highlight na ibang-iba ang definition ng Pinoy kung ano ba talaga ang mayaman. Tingin kasi natin, pagbago ang cellphone, pag maraming kotse, pag travel left and right, pag branded ang damit, eh, yun yung mayaman. But all those activities lower the net worth and decrease wealth stability. Hindi siya pang payaman, pang pahira pa nga eh. And this is what I call feeling wealthy lang. There is a huge difference between being wealthy and feeling wealthy. Sad to say, karamihan sa atin ay gusto feeling wealthy. They aim to feel wealthy, so they never really become wealthy. And so I ask you one thing. Do you want to feel wealthy or do you want to be wealthy? The choice is yours. This is what I mean when I say wealth is a choice. You can choose to feel wealthy and continue to work for the rest of your life. Live on paycheck to paycheck, always be worried about money. You know, hashtag YOLO, pero hashtag zero financial stability rin. Or you can choose to be wealthy. Sa simula, oo, magtitipid ka. But in the end, you'll have financial independence, you'll have financial security, and you'll achieve financial freedom. So you can truly enjoy life without worrying about money. Pillar number three, wealth is a choice. And please be reminded that whatever choice you make right now, you will pass it on. Because pillar number four is, wealth is passed on to the next generation. The decision you will make for yourself will not only affect you, but will also affect the people you care about. So choose wisely. At this point, I'd like to leave you with some action steps. These are just two simple steps that will take a couple of minutes. You can do both or just one. Ang importante ay may gawin ka. The first is, if you haven't done this already, compute for your net worth and wealth stability para alam mo kung nasan ka ba talaga ngayon so you know what your financial status is. This marks your starting point in your journey to financial freedom. Second, mas simple ito gawin, build the habit of saying, I choose to be wealthy. Simple ito but it has great impact. In fact, let's say that right now. I choose to be wealthy. When you wake up, say, I choose to be wealthy. Whenever you get your wallet, say, I choose to be wealthy. Whenever you step into your office, say, I choose to be wealthy. When you get home from work, say, I choose to be wealthy. When you're angry or happy, say, I choose to be wealthy. Doing this gives you a constant reminder that you are, in fact, choosing to be wealthy. And it will affect the decisions you make on a day-to-day -day basis. You will be amazed at the changes that will start happening in your life when you build this habit. And with that, we end this second training video. So let's have a quick recap of everything we've talked about. Pillar number three is wealth is a choice. And poverty is a result of not making that choice. And you learn that you really have to choose to become wealthy, not only because of inflation, but also because of the poverty mindsets and habits that have been passed on to us. Because pillar number four, wealth is passed on. Unfortunately, so is poverty. You then learn about the biggest poverty mindset that hold people back. And that is the definition of wealth. You learned about two ways of measuring real wealth. These are net worth and wealth stability. These are the true measurements of wealth. And in the process, you learned the huge difference of feeling wealthy and being wealthy. How feeling wealthy will lead to zero financial stability while being wealthy will lead to financial freedom. And right now, you have a choice. And I leave you the question of what will you choose? With that said, thank you again for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, I'd love to know what you think, so please leave your comments, questions, and thoughts below. I'll be reading and responding to them personally. The next video will be sent to your email within a couple of days, so watch out for it. Until then, always remember, wealth is a choice. Choose to be wealthy.